Now, it is of Moses experiment number one. A whisking tube can be used as selectively permeable membrane. It has a microscopic pores which allow small molecules such as water through but not the large molecules such as glucose. It means a selectively permeable membrane only allows water molecules to pass through it and the large molecules such as sugar and glucose are not allowed to pass through it. Notice that the level of the sugar solution in the capillary tube rises as water diffuses into the visking tube. When explaining osmosis, it's a good idea to remember four aspects to your answer. Firstly, the direction of water flow is needed. Secondly, the result of the water flow. Thirdly, remember the word osmosis itself. And lastly, you will need the osmosis definition. Okay, now, this is osmosis experiment number two. In this experiment, we measure the changes in length of potato cylinders placed in varying concentration or different concentration of sugar solution for about six to eight hours. The graph produced will enable us to work out the concentration of the potato cell. Now, this table shows the concentration of sugar solution in percent, like 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. Initial length of the potato cylinder is constant. Final length of the potato cylinder is changed after the absorption of sugar solution. Okay, now change in length is 1.5 centimeter, and here you plot the graph. Now, second 1.2 centimeter, 0.5 centimeter. 0.2 minus centimeter minus 1 centimeter and minus 1.5 centimeter okay at a source a close concentration of 5.2 percent there is no change in length as there is no net flow of water in and out of the potato cell through the osmosis and both concentration are equal we can also say that concentration of the water in the sucrose solution is equal to the concentration of the water in the cell okay now we already discussed about the passive transport the natural process movement of molecules from higher concentration to lower concentration is called the passive transport. Now we are studying about the active transport. It is an active process because substances can enter cells against the concentration gradient. And because of this against push force, they require, this process requires energy in the form of ATP, okay?
Sometimes dissolved molecules are at a higher concentration inside the cell than outside. But because the organism needs these molecules, they still have to be absorbed. Carrier proteins pick up specific molecules and take them through the cell membrane against the concentration gradient by active transport. That is, from a low concentration to a high concentration of the molecule. In this example of a plant root hair cell, the concentration gradient for nitrate ions goes from high inside the cell to low outside the cell. However, the plant needs more nitrate ions and will therefore need to transport these ions into the cell against the concentration gradient. This process is active, so these cells should have many mitochondria to supply the energy needed in the form of ATP. In humans, active transport takes place following the digestion of food in the small intestine. Carbohydrates are broken down into simple sugars such as glucose. Notice that there is a lower concentration of glucose in the gut lumen compared to the blood. The glucose is absorbed by active transport into the bloodstream against the concentration gradient. This process is active, so these cells should have many mitochondria to supply the energy needed in the form of ATP. Another adaptation of the cells are the many microvilli to increase the surface area for absorption of digested food.